Okay, hi folks, Daryl here, and the car I'm going to be looking at today is this 72 Porsche 911T project, and it's for sale on Bring a Trailer. And this is kind of an interesting car to me. I know these cars quite well, so I figured I'd lend some insight to anyone who is uh, looking to bid or buy. And I should say that I have no affiliation whatsoever with um, the seller, the buyer, the bidders, and I most likely will not be bidding on this car, as I already have some. Okay, so first off, let's uh, run the numbers on the car. And to do that, I'd like to go down directly and look at the uh, VIN, VIN tags that are actually on the car. And here they are. This is the one at the front, which is attached to the uh, front latch panel. And this VIN plate appears to be absolutely original. I wouldn't doubt it at all. The number, the lettering is correctly stamped. And the number itself is uh, correct for a 72T which was imported to the United States, so a USAT with the mechanical fuel injection. And the other number, the important number on the car, is just to the right behind the gas tank, and that's the same number, so you gotta make sure those match. And there is, in fact, another number which is on the pillar, and you can also sometimes find numbers under the dashboard panels, but those are not as readily available. We also have the engine number here, which is uh, also correct for the uh, for a 911T USA spec, so that's good too. Okay, let's go back to the uh, very beginning, to the main pictures, and just have a look at this car. First off, we see that this car is quite horrible looking, but in this case, I don't think this car actually is as horrible as it first appears, which is one of the reasons I'm doing a, a video on this car. So this is a fairly desirable model. It's the 2.4 liter, which was uh, made in 72 and 73, and uh, with uh, quite a bit more power than the 2.2 or 2.2 2 liter previous models. So we can see that all the trim is intact on this car. The only thing I can really see missing on the exterior is the deco trim that usually runs along the rocker here. And these rockers have been painted black for some reason, like as an appearance by some previous owner. The wheels are 15 inch and they are a light alloy original to this car. So that is a good thing. They are missing some of their black uh, or all of the black, which would normally be in these recesses here. Okay, let's continue looking at the outside of the car. And in the back, we can once again see that uh, just about everything is intact as far as the trim. There's the original chrome that goes on the Birchhoff muffler. And the grill has these little uh, sort of like indentations in the uh, slats, which is fairly normal. They're, they're aluminum and they're very, uh, very sensitive to pressure. The rear trunk is rusted out and uh, as are several other body panels. So. Uh, the rust on this car is primarily surface, or I should say exterior, upper exterior rust, which is very consistent with sort of like a salt spray, sea spray rust. rust. So this car was most likely parked by the ocean, and it is being sold in Florida, so that sort of pans out as well. And here we can see the repaint in red was, is uh, the clear coat has been peeling off of the base coat, or possibly it was repainted red and then clear coated over that red. We don't really know which. There are no traces of the light ivory paint that came with this car originally from the factory. And I've studied some of the, the paint areas where you would normally see some traces of the light ivory. So my belief is that this car was stripped to bare metal when it was repainted. And I'm going to guess that was maybe in the mid 80s early 80s to see, to see this kind of damage by the time it was it stopped being driven in uh, 97 the right front fender has some obvious holes in it and i i would say that possibly this could be repaired but possibly it's uh, just toast and you may want to buy a new one or fiberglass ones it's very likely that the the headlight bucket inside is also rusted out as they tend to do that the hood, I don't see any real holes in it, but they do tend to rust on the inside corners here, so I would I would plan on having rust on the inside corners. The left fender here does not look quite as bad. Um, the horn grills look pretty good. All this trim looks okay. I think there was a dent in this uh, in this bumper deco cover. That's an original 
orange bar badge, although it's in quite poor condition. And here you can see the 97 window sticker. So this car was being driven up until 97, we can presume. And it has fairly new looking tires on it. I'll talk about that in a second. More trim pictures. Everything looks pretty complete here. All this aluminum trim, which is very important to have. Uh, let's see, keeping going. Basically all the same pictures. Now this is the unique item on the 7273, which is the oil filler flap, which looks identical to the fuel filler flap on the front. And the reason they actually stopped uh, making these filler flaps is that you know fuel attendants used to put fuel in the oil sump, which was actually quite a bad idea. Now I know from personal experience that you can run a 911 uh, for quite a while with about a 50-50 mix of oil and fuel without doing any damage to the engine at all. So uh, don't ask me how I know that, but I do. And there it is again. Now the tires on this car look pretty unworn. I think that they sat with the car. You can see the uh, mud here where it was sitting in the, in the mud. But it's an indication that someone put new tires on this car planning to continue driving it. But something happened to the car and they stopped driving it. It's not like it, it wore out the old tires. So that's sort of an interesting clue. It means that possibly there was a mechanical failure. So someone put new tires on it, something happened to it mechanically, and they stopped driving it. Here we start to see the interior pictures, and this is a leather-covered steering wheel, which came from the factory this way. It's actually quite nice. I have one of these on one of my cars. This one is obviously in very bad condition. Now, the interior itself has been redone in black at some point, probably exactly the same time it was repainted. And the black vinyl does not match the pattern of a, the original black you would see on a, a car, a 911 of this vintage. So this is the black vinyl here. These armrests are actually like a hard plastic, that armrest and uh, some of these areas here. These lower dash pieces are hard plastic. That's not vinyl. These were always black even on a um, you know a car with a tan interior and here you see this brown color here on the uh, dashboard this may have been the original vinyl although it should have been basket weave i believe i'm not exactly sure of that and some more interior pictures the seats frames themselves look to be original it's just that they've been recovered and they appear to have been uh, recovered by someone who did the upholstery themselves. These pleats are sewn by hand, I would say. You know, they're not pressed in like that. I'm not sure this is a kit or if someone, um, you know, did it themselves. Here we can see the gauges. Uh, the colors are quite faded on the uh, on the reds. So this car has seen a lot of sun and also more more sort of sun damage there. More sun damage to these, these stalks. That key I do not recognize at all. It's not a Porsche key. And there's the brown again. An original radio. That is a um, that is a Blaupunkt radio. The chances of it working are, yeah, you know, minimal. I've seen them work. The dashboard is completely cracked. Sometimes you can just fix the crack. They usually crack right here. But in this case, uh, I would say replacement is in order. Same thing with the speaker cover there. An interesting sort of EU badge a period to, uh, let's see, when did the EU start? In the 80s, late 70s, sometime around there. So sort of a interesting sort of badge. And with the hood open, we can see that um, it has the washer fluid bottle right there. And that's the VIN tag, all the seals. It's being held up by an, a separate strut. This is, this is not an original strut. That's the original strut and that one right there. It has this cardboard cover, which is sometimes missing. And you can see the paintwork that was done. They painted red right down to here and there's the white. So the car looks like it was in fact white as it says on the build sheet. The fuse box covers appear to be intact. Those are sometimes missing. It has some uh, some Porsche batteries in it, so that indicates that this car may have been being serviced at the dealer. 
shortly or you know within 10 years of uh, being parked so that's sort of a good sign that it has Porsche batteries and you can see the bolt heads for this this fender are not painted that means that this fender was off the car when it was painted so it was not sort of like a quickie repaint it was um, it was a pretty thorough job it looks like this jack is not original and neither are the horns another original Porsche battery And we're coming here to the engine. And I've looked at these engine pictures. It has the original fuel injection. The mechanical fuel injection Bosch unit is right there. It's missing this little tube. That's not a really a big deal. Um, all the wiring, all these pieces appear to be there. So that's good. And you have the yellow engine cover, which is also indicative of the 911T. And here are the uh, fuel injectors and all their lines. Uh, now, the seller says in the description that the engine turns over, but they've not tried to start it. I'm sometimes a little suspicious of that. Uh, I'm sure this fan turns, uh, but that does not mean the engine itself is turning, so that this pulley turns another pulley down below there, and that's the actual engine turning. You can spin this fan without actually turning the engine. So that's, some, that's a question to, a pointed question to ask to make sure the engine is spinning, which is a very important point. Now, when someone has a car and the engine turns, but they haven't tried to spin it, and in this case, a very valuable car, which if this engine ran, it would add a lot of money. I sometimes wonder if they did try to start it, but it wouldn't start. And obviously with the old fuel, it wouldn't start, but it would be a fairly simple matter to, matter to drain all the fluids from this car hook up an external fuel tank, you know, replace the oil, and spin it, and just see if it started. Because you do have a points ignition system, you could clean the points and get it started uh, without too much trouble. Oops. Uh, going back to this engine picture, okay. If it was going to start. Or it is possible that they, did, they just didn't try to start it. That's another possibility, or because they were afraid of spinning the engine. So a question is, does it, does it spin on the starter, or does it, or they, are they spinning that alternator fan? And now we're going to get into the actual rust of the chassis. So the rust pattern on this car is kind of interesting. It has the very typical front suspension pan rust, which is common with 911s. It's not terribly bad to replace. You cut it here and here, and this entire front pan underneath is replaced. You have to break all these seams. So it is a big job, but it is not a horrible job. And most early 911s have had this work done if they've seen any kind of weather at all. The interesting thing about the rust pattern on this car is that this car, the chassis, in my eyes, is really not that bad. And we're going to skip forward right now to the uh, what they show of the chassis pictures. Here in this picture, you can see the rear of the floor is, this seam looks fairly tight. It does not look like there's rust in here. Same thing with this area right here is often rusted out right below the torsion bars. And I don't really see rust. That seam right there, you can follow my pointer, looks tight. So I don't see rust in this area, which is sort of surprising given the state of the outside of the car. Now I do see right here, there could be a rust hole right here. That's underneath those little rear jump seats. And where this brake bracket attaches, they can rust there. And the question is, is this, is this a rust hole from the inside out? Or is this, if it is a rust hole, just because of that's where the bracket attaches? Could be either one. I'm going to give a 50-50 shot of whether there's actually a through perforation hole there. And it's just hard to tell from these pictures whether it's perforated or not. Here you can see the heater boxes. Like it, This is a very intact, complete car. I don't see anything really missing. You've got the rear sway bar there. And once again, here's the rear frame channel right there. And that seam going down really looks pretty good. I mean, this is where they rust. This is the center torque tube. And there are no holes or cracks in there that I can see. Once again, looking very carefully for a rust, I, this is the other side. That seam looks good. It looks solid back here. 
So, and there it is. And the floor pan, they usually rust right there. I'm sure there's rust right there, which is just underneath the, um, where the brake master cylinder is, where the, or where the pedal, uh, where your pedals are, where your feet are. But, and I'm sure, I'm sure there's some surface rust there. And this is a very thick coating that Porsche sprayed on the cars. And sometimes it can hide rust underneath it. But in this case, I'm gonna say, except for these few spots at the front, I really don't see any rust under here. I don't see any rust in these rockers, although there are no really good pictures of the inner or outer sills. But looking as hard as I can, I don't really see it. And here's a shot of the fuel tank, which may or may not be intact. I'm sure it's rusty inside, but there are no obvious holes. There is some staining where it leaked from the plugs that are in the back here, but that is uh, could just be considered normal. And there, once again, is the shot of the front pan rusted out. Uh, looking at the lower lips of the front valance, I don't see holes in this one. In the rear, there are holes in the lower rear valance. So those will have to be replaced. This looks like heavy surface rust to me. And here we are again. The rear lip of the floor looks good. I'm going to say the floors are good in this car. The question is, what do the floors look like on the inside? And that would be a question for the seller to get more pictures. Uh, so I think if I was going to bid on this car, I would ask the seller, can you lift the carpets and show me pictures of the underside, uh, you know, of the floor pan from the inside? And also, can you lift the rear seats, those little jump seats, of which there are no pictures, and show me pictures of underneath there to see if there are any holes there? But I'm going to say you're going to be into replacing metal in the bottoms of the doors. Possibly these outer rockers. Don't know. Sometimes the reinf reinforcement support back here at the bottom where it attaches the inner rocker might be rusted. But I think this car is a salt spray rust pattern car. I don't think the rust is in the chassis as much as you might think looking at the outside. And you've obviously got rust perforation right through the lower parts of these fenders. So you're going to be replacing outer body panels on this car. I assume the roof is also has surface rust on it. Uh, often these corners rust out right where the corners of the windscreens are, front and rear. Uh, and in the case of the rear, where they rust out at the corners, it allows water to go down into those rear seat areas. And that's why it rusts them out as well. So count on some rust holes right here in these corners. But like I said, this car is not as rusty as you might think. So the question is, what will this car sell for? And it is a very desirable year. So the 2.4 liter is a great engine. It makes uh, 140 horsepower, but upwards of 200 foot-pounds of torque. So it's a, it's a wonderfully tract tractile motor. And I'm going to guess, uh, making a prediction that this will sell for between 35000 and $50,000. If it goes anywhere in the 20s, I think that's a fairly good deal considering how minimal the rust appears to be. So that's my prediction. If you want to leave predictions in the comments, uh, feel free to. And if you want to leave any comments at all on this car, uh, feel free to at least leave them in the comments, which is uh, you know, maybe a better place to do it than on the actual auction site where you're going to affect the auction. I know that I don't comment as freely anymore now that Bring a Trailer is... Uh, you know, auctioning cars compared to when they were just looking at them. So what I'm doing here is I'm just looking at cars for my own entertainment and everything here is just for entertainment. There's no advice given, no financial advice, nothing like that. Okay, enjoy and have a nice day. Happy bidding.